What's poppin' guys, Easler here. We're a week away from the full launch of Astronomica's first set, Elysium Expedition, and decided what would be a better video idea than a bit of an overview and strategy guide for the two starter decks. And to be honest, I didn't really decide that. Shout out to Phoenix Nest for the suggestion on starter deck videos about a month ago. So let's get started. Now first off, I want to go over the aggressive Babylon 4 starter deck, Firestorm. The Firestorm starter deck is an aggressive deck which focuses on dealing damage fast and heavy while shuffling through the different munition cards available. Now unlike Insect Oracle, Firestorm is not based around its super rare. Inferno Elemental is a pretty solid card, but the deck's not based around it, it's just another heavy hitter in your arsenal. There are a few key cards to keep in mind in the deck. First of all, the equipment. There are two copies of each munitions card in this deck, and they all have their uses. Blazing Signet can allow you to deal damage fast by dropping it on a unit in an unoccupied column, allowing you to deal quick damage. Dragon Scale Staff makes your uh, units extremely strong and hard to attack over, and Twin Blade can help you freeze units in your opponent's front row, which can you know, it's not always very often you use it, but when you can use it, it gives you a little bit of control, even in an aggressive deck like this. Now along with these cards, there's support for them like Reforge, which allows you to destroy a munitions card on the field to get two cards, or there's the rare for the deck, Weapon Master, who turns every equipment into an orbital volley. When playing Firestorm, you have to keep the pressure up, and a deck is built to do that. Take advantage of cards like Babel Berserker, which are strong one cost units. One cost units can move around the board way more than the others, so they're really useful in the early game. You have to keep in mind that in Astronomica, unit placements are very important. Stay aggressive and keep on the move. Your opponent will be at zero life before you know it. Now upgrades. Looking impacts, you should look for cards like Ignis Squadron Blacksmith to help you grab munitions or extra copies of Avernus Rogue to help you deal damage. Cards like Astral Ballista are also pretty solid, and if you decide not to go for Firestorm Elemental, cards like Flame Blast will help you still use those cards in your discard pile. To counter Firestorm, the best way is to try and kill their units before they can equip them with munitions. And I know, this is easier said than done. But hear me out. Equipment cards are, by their very nature, bricky. If they have no units to attach those equipment cards to, or their planets don't work out for them with the units they have, the deck stalls. They can't equip the munitions, reforges become exploration fodder, uh, so all you have to do is keep that pressure up. And that's it for the Firestorm portion. Now next up is Insect Oracle, the Kakitos Council based deck, and it's a whole nother beast. This deck is way more strategic, it's just as battle based but it's focused on more getting hand advantage, interactions, and then waiting for the perfect moment to get the most out of your draws. You can easily get crushed playing this deck if you don't keep your head in the game, despite some of the seemingly powerful cards in it. Unlike Firestorm, Insect Oracle relies a lot on Selena Insect Hive Mind and her ability to reuse events. This deck features many powerful events like Invoked Soul, Force Feedback, Cyclonian Foresight, and Psychic Storm, so you want to be able to use those twice to your advantage. Now the main way you're going to kill things in this deck is by using Jupiter Spheres, an attack reduction event like the previously stated Force Feedback, and a heavy hitter like Future Sight Occultist, Spellbook Warlock, or Lifeblade Knight. Everything has a second life in this deck and using a combination of Selena and Fallen Vanguards, you can recycle things and do the same plays often. Now Selena's effect to replay events can be used to great advantage. For example, you could place Force Feedback twice, reduce that unit's attack by 4, and when it's destroyed, draw 2 cards. Or you could play Invoke Soul, revive a Selena in your discard pile, and then use that Selena to play Invoke Soul again to play a Fallen Vanguard in your discard pile, and then use that Fallen Vanguard's effect to get another unit back to your hand. You can generate a lot of advantage with this, but to be clear, it tends to just be like a number of units game. 
most of the units in this deck have low attack, so you're going to really need to use your attack reducing events to get over them. Continuing off of that, Selena is super fragile and has two attack, so usually you want to play her in the back row and put a unit in front of her, or play cards like Heli and Diplomat to negate attacks against her. So, good cards to look for in the main set to upgrade this deck are Heli and Assassin for more direct removal, Fragmented Memory, or even Shrine of the Soul if you're looking to make the deck more Cyclonian based. More copies of Heli and Diplomat are also a good idea. Now, to counter Insect Oracle, simply go as aggressive as possible. The deck tends to struggle to keep up with constant attacks and all the units have low base attack stats. So, for example, fire scale staff, munitions like that, can make it pretty hard. Selena is also really fragile and killing her is a surefire win condition, so it's not too hard to keep her back. Even for other Kikita's council decks, like any that run Hellion Assassin, or Death's Mark. And now that's all I have for strategies today, but there are two more announcements I want to make. First of all, the Ether Games Discord server is now open to the public, and the link will be in the description. Big shout out to Diamond E from Monster World PCG for the help, and the link to his channel will be in the description below. The server will have early updates and polls, and will also have places where you can request topics for videos, but within reason. And the server is PG-13, so if you're a little bit on the younger side, maybe wait a bit before joining the server. Next, the cards for both starter decks are now up on Untap In, a website for playing tabletop card games. The deck lists are available on the server, and more cards will be added to Untap In in batches after the set's out and balancing is finalized. Now, thanks for watching. We're a week away now from the Legacy of Expeditions launch, and I personally cannot be more excited. If you're excited like me, please hit the like button and consider the subscription button if you haven't already, and hit that bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And as always, I hope to see you again next time. Take care.